Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. You got Luke. Luke, long time right in on this one. The ASCE ugh, Concrete Canoe Competition. These are, I can't believe we're devoting, just saying, James, given our history with civil engineering and, you know, this kind of spat between us and them, I'll say. Uh, I can't believe that you agreed to do this. My guess is we're scraping the bottom of the barrel for episodes, and that's why you agreed to it. We have no other possible ideas as to what to cover. You know, we've had a number of write-ins on this, and I kind of feel like we're throwing the civils a bone here, right? Like, here you go, guys. All you do is work with concrete, so we might as well talk about the one contest that wraps up all of your education into one thing, right? And of all the things that I know that civils do, this is probably the coolest thing they do because everything else they do is relatively boring. I mean, yeah, like I, I mean, like canoeing, like, but whenever you told me concrete canoe, I just assumed it was like, they just like poured like concrete and like, that was it. I did not realize to the level of, was that not it? Well, yeah, well, no. <laughs> Fun fact, that was not what they do. Like, there's much more to this. Um, yeah, yeah so. there is. I, I think it's pretty impressive, and it sounds like a fun contest, if you ask me. Before we get into the fun contest, Luke, can I talk about the history a little? Oh, please do. All right, so fun fact to start things off for you. The American Society of Civil Engineers, the ASCE that we mentioned at the start, is the oldest national engineering society in the United States. It was founded in 1852, which is quite a while By ago. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. Is that is that a fun fact? <laughs> I'm just making it up. I don't know. Didn't he like build a log cabin or something like that? That something. sounds like a civil engineer job. <laughs> it had 12 whole members um, and it was created to disseminate information amongst engineers who were building roads and canals and bridges and railroads and concrete canoes. I don't think they were doing that then. Probably not. Probably, probably not, not that. But the other things they were doing. The other things they were doing. Um, sure. So my my history here, pretty quick, only a couple paragraphs. Uh, mid, mid-1980s, a cat, is that right? A cat by the name of yeah. Dr. R. John Craig. I don't think I got what the R stands for. So we'll go with John. Uh, was a professor at the New Jersey Institute of Technology. And if you remember, Luke, that is who we interviewed, not Dr. John Craig, but someone from the New Jersey Institute of Technology about their makerspace. Uh, we have an episode all about that. So that was fantastic. Um, he was a member of the ASCE Committee on Student Services, uh, and him and other members began to formulate plans around a uniform regional competition that formalized a plan to study how to make this concrete canoe contest a national committee. And in the spring of 84, Five, Dr. Craig here first brought his grand vision to the National Concrete Canoe Commission to ASCE. Um, they were like, man, do we love the idea of making really heavy canoes. And so in the fall of 85, they came together with the preliminary rules and presented it to the Committee on Student Services. Uh, after about two more years of committee debate, um, in fall of 87, the ASCE National Convention of uh, the Educational Activities Committee adopted the preliminary rules and established the standards for all this stuff. In winter of 87, just as the first, this is so sad, just as the first, isn't it always, <laughs> national competition was in sight, Dr. Craig was diagnosed with a rare, inoperable brain tumor. Oh. And, yeah, right? And he passed away two months before his dream of the National Concrete Canoe Competition came about, which is oh. just just the worst. So then in June of 88, the first national competition was held in East Lansing, Michigan. If you haven't checked it out, check out our episode that we just did. Just did. Oh, no, crap. That was on Michigan. No, it was, it was the blue and yellow one <laughs> we did. Was, See, even that was you get mixed University up University of Michigan. The green and white one, the Spartans here of Michigan We'll State do that one next. The ones that, okay, that's a good one. Um, in the spring of 89... Uh, it was approved for the formation of a permanent subcommittee to ensure the execution of the National Concrete Canoe Competition. So this thing's been going on for quite a while now, 30-something years. Uh, and through all of the dedicated efforts from people like Dr. John uh, Craig, 
They established this competition. And in that spirit, the ASCE has dedicated the co-ed sprint race as a memorial to the teamwork and dedication of Dr. R. John Craig. And it is our distinct honor, they say, to present the R. John Craig Memorial Award to the school that best exemplifies the spirit and cooperative ideals, Luke, of the competition by placing first in the co-ed sprint race each year. So, so thank you for your efforts. Dr. I have Donald one Craig. other interesting fun fact to add to that, that I'm sure. surprised you omitted. Um, omitted. So it didn't actually, steal. no, no. <laughs> it, the, the, the stuff I found um, through extensive research was that this actually goes back to the 60s. It said, it said I, yeah. there were, it said student chapters, like, like one college chapter and another college chapter would compete against each other. And I think at the time it was informal. The rules were probably kind of loosey goosey. Um, so it wasn't ASCE sanctioned, but it yeah. was done by ASCE student chapters doing intramur intramural, say that 10 times real fast. Inter Don't. Intramural, say it Concrete. one time slow. <laughs> I can't say it at all, period. So yeah, so it goes back to the sixties actually. That's crazy, isn't it? I mean, they didn't even have it. concrete back then. Yeah, I mean, back then there was probably <laughs> like steel canoe competition or iron ore. Iron, and they all rusted out. So I, the other thing, too, I, I need to do a little bit. So this is a little bit on canoes. I'm going to give just a little bit of like a diagram of a canoe because I thought I knew what a canoe was. And then as I started reading some of these regulations, these weird words like bow or bow, however you pronounce that word, and a gunwale uh, started popping up. So I did a little anatomy so the bow and the stern the bow is the front of the sea ship so you're facing okay. forward that's the bow they look really similar like although there is a really weird rule fun fact the bow has to remain the bow for the duration of a race meaning like you, you can't, can't spin around you can't turn and spin and go the other direction like it has to you, you got to be pointed the same thing forward because one of time. them is like a slalom so yeah. i guess there would be a chance you could that you potentially spin about. cheat if you kind of so uh so the bow is mm, the that's front. interesting uh the stern uh is the back and then the one that got me interested in the uh, the anatomy of a canoe was the word gunwales. I was like, what the heck is a gunwale? And I'm like, yeah. what do I need them for safety for? So in the description of the rules, you have From to the have- From the whales, obviously. Exactly. A gunwale is like um, a, a molding that goes along the edge of the canoe on either side. So in like a normal non-concrete canoe, it's a nice rounded, smooth piece of plastic or- you know, a piece of wood, it's nice and rounded and smooth, but these are concrete. So they had to be installed for like safety. So you wouldn't get all like scratched up or things like that. It also adds reinforcement and kind of ties the structure together. Cause if you think about it, it's basically an oval, like a pointy oval. And that kind of holds the structure together. Like structurally, there's something that the, the gun oval. whale does. <laughs> um, so then you have um, what are called rockers. That is the bottom front of the canoe. You have the keel, which is the bottom rear of the canoe. And then you also have these things called thwarts. I always thought they were just called like spreaders. That's the piece that goes from side to side that actually prevents like, some I guess, non-concrete canoes add some stiffening. But for a concrete canoe, it's actually helpful because concrete isn't like... It's a little brittle in some cases. It doesn't work in all the directions. It, it does not out. work in all directions. <laughs> um, and then the paddle is super important. I'm just really quick. Tip, blade, throat, shaft, and grip on a paddle. And you can kind of guess going from top to bottom what's what. So that is I the mean, anatomy of I might of a not canoe. be able to, but I'm but guessing a our listeners can. A gun whale. That's my favorite. I didn't know if it was gun whale or gun wall, so that's good. I'm assuming whale, like you said, for like Moby yeah. Dick and like yeah, yeah, you know, put a gun on the edge of it and shoot the whales. Can you assuming? imagine going down the the Allegheny or the Yakagany or the Mon and gunning down one of those whale catfish? No, no. All right, before we continue on with this amazing, <laughs> we didn't get very far. <laughs> we know what a canoe is now. Yes, <laughs> let's take a break for a word from our sponsor. 
I have to assume this is the Society of Civil Engineers or whatever they're... They hate us, though, so After I'm guessing... After all the good things we've said about all them... All the good things How dare say. they not sponsor us? How dare they? <laughs> no sponsor this week, which is a total shock to everyone, I'm sure. But we do have Dose shoutouts, which is way better. Way better. And Who before I even shout out, let me tell you, Luke, I have knocked down my 323 emails that had gone unanswered to 279. I've gotten nice. all of the todays through the beginning of November done. You're so amazing. That makes me feel like there's probably some from like July in there that I Possibly. haven't gotten to. All right. Our first shout out is Scott H. Just wanted to say that I started listening to the podcast recently, and I thoroughly enjoy it. It is a great listen on my commute to school and work. I go to school at Penn State University. Yeah. Go Mud Ducks. Mud Ducks. For electrical engineering, cat, definitely right? the best field, yeah. he says. The Nittany Lion, yeah. And I'm a senior, so he's... He's probably close to graduating here. After I graduate, I will be working at a business that I am currently an intern at where I am a contractor for electrical substation engineering. Love the podcast and would love to get a sticker or two. For a Penn Stater, heck yeah, you can get a sticker in a few years. You gotta love whenever like an internship turns into a legit gig. Did you did yours right? do that by chance or no? Um, it would have involved me moving back to St. Mary's, therefore that was not an option. <laughs> <laughs> My second shout out is Hector G. Um, this is a good one, Link. My name is, he not that they all aren't all, they're all good they're ones, all good. yes. My name is Hector, and I just wanted to say that I really appreciate the work you guys put into the show. I'm currently on episode 62, but I listen to podcasts on my way to work or when I'm at work cooking or butchering fish or meat. I'm a professional chef, but went went to school for mechanical engineering and didn't finish, but really want to go back, which episode 48 kind of helped in choosing where to try and get into. Listening to you guys always makes my day and helps keep me motivated. So I love this right in Luke. Not only is Hector looking to go back to school, mm -hmm. uh, get his engineering degree, finish that one up, but he's also working as a professional cook, which you and I both oh, love cooking. I love and cooking. I think we falsely kind of romanticize it, right? Like we're like, God, I love cooking. That has to be better than like what I'm doing. And then it turns out that the hours are super long and yeah. the kitchens are super hot and it's really demanding and probably not all that we think it's cracked up Hence the reason why Hector wants to get out of cooking and go back to college and become an engineer. I think so. So good job, Hector. Um, you know, keep on butchering those fish and meats and, you know, get that engineering degree when you can, can get around to it. Um, if any of you have a nice story to tell us, if you want to say nice things about us, tell us how funny and handsome we are, anything like that, why don't you go ahead and email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe, like, share. We love the reviews. And as always, you can tell your smart devices to play the Unprofessional Engineering Podcast anytime. That's what I love about the smart devices. Oh, they're so smart. Um, where would you like to go next, Luke? So I think we got to like jump right into like the competition, like what they're doing, talk about like the design, like how they get judged, all that sort of stuff. So there's this really long problem statement. And really I'm just going to, I'm going to read just, I think the section that, like is the important one. Um, and I'm just going to read this verbatim. I, I, I did well, read Accuracy type it. is what we stri it's strive for. All we strive for is yeah. accuracy. That is not accurate. Um, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> teams are to construct a prototype canoe and display that educates the section panel and world concrete expo attendees about the canoe design materials chosen and durability to withstand the rigors of a series of race demonstrations consisting of 200 and 400 meter sprints with 180 degree hairpin turns and a 200 meter solemn race including the transportation to and from various venues teams will need to research design procure and test materials and construct a full scale prototype in full compliance with the RFP request for proposal into taking uh, taking into consideration the specifications constraints and other requirements. So essentially, they're building a concrete out of canoe 
They got to race this thing. They got to show it off at a conference. They have to do a technical presentation where they get up and, you know, do a PowerPoint or whatever they need to do. And they have to actually write a proposal that details the whole process soup to nuts. That's that's the contest. So, yeah, here's the thing. Making a concrete canoe, super cool. Racing said concrete canoe, super cool. Sounds like a great time. And then they're like, now go make a PowerPoint, oh, make an RFP. The things that go engineers fill out this hate technical doing. Thing. Yeah, like, and it's just setting engineers up for the horrible reality of their future. Of what their life of, is. Yeah, of like all that cool stuff you thought you were going to do. Turns out you're going to just make PowerPoints Lots and play in Excel. So you know what? That stinks. <laughs> yeah. And, and you the, need to be good at it. Anyone listening, you need to be good at it. But boy, do. does that stink. You do for sure. So, so I guess it's a it's a good real world. It kinda, is. You know, and it's not all canoes into, and paddles. It's not all canoes and paddles. So uh, I'm going to talk about eligibility real quick. Um, and then if you want to talk about anything else, yeah, um, man. so obviously you have to be a member of the ASPCA or whatever their acronym is. <laughs> I don't uh, think that's the one. The a, the <laughs> AS, yeah, that's the dog and cat one. Uh, the a a s c e. but they do have some interesting, um, eligibility requirements for diversity. Um, oh. so, so they don't have any race diversity oh. requirements. Cause I think that could be tough for a school just in case you don't have a, a broad, smaller schools might not have a more diverse race population Man. in their, um, hey, we've talked about some of the bigger schools and their breakdown and I know not so they're not the best, either. Yeah. Uh, but, but theirs is based off of gender. So yeah. you can have up to 10 people, uh, per team. And if they, if the participants identify as she, her, she, her, she, her, if they identify as female, there, there can be five and a male, there can be five. If you have mm -hmm. individuals that identify their gender as they, them, then where they don't specify male or female, then you can't have more than one more male that identifies as he, him oh, versus, gotcha. so you can't have like a, you can't have like a whole bunch of folks identify as they, them, and, and they're essentially take you what, so you can only go one way or another I, with, I the, gotcha. Yeah. So, okay. um, but other than that and being, you know, obviously <laughs> they, they had stuff listed, like you have, your dues have to be paid. And like, there's all these crazy other things. There, there other was a lot about make sure we get our money. Yeah. yeah <laughs> because that's how these organizations exist. But other than that, yeah. eligibility was pretty wide open. So yeah. Yeah. I saw that it would cost the teams around like three to 5,000 smackers. For I think like, it all depended on, yeah. Yeah, materials and whatnot. And that didn't include your travel costs. And just kind of like uh, with First Robotics, which is surprisingly way more expensive than this, mm -hmm. being that First is like high school, which is odd. Um, you know, the more that you qualify for, the more you're going to have to dish mm -hmm. out for for your expenses. But anywho, um, what else do you have going on there, Luke? Uh, I think that's all I had. I, th I think we probably want to get into like the design of the, the canoes and then like talk about the races and how they get measured and ranked. Okay, real quick before we do that, um, just calling it out. This is a big old commitment. Uh, depending on the it's number of people time. on your teams, they're, they're estimating like hundreds of hours per person on the team that they have to put into this competition. The event itself is like 25 hours long where they have almost like a whole day of competition. Then they have like the day where you're doing your boring technical presentation and watching everybody else's and heckling them as they're doing it, I assume, because that's good sportsmanship that's what you do. and spirit. Actually, right? you could be disqualified for that. It's in the rules. That's not what Dr. R. John Craig wanted exactly. from this experience. Um, other than that, I was disappointed that September is when you're supposed to submit for the next year's competition. So we already missed our cutoff for this year, but I did want everyone to know that if you wanted to send us tickets to attend, uh, this year, June 10th through 12th, it's at the university of Wisconsin Platteville. So go ahead and get unprofessional engineering there. We will give you a sticker for your, I career. might be driving through there. I have a wedding in Utah. 
Maybe you're I'll going stop to by. drive to Utah. I might drive. I don't no. know. We'll, see. We'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> okay. Continue on. Sorry. Okay. So uh. we got to talk about how they make these things. And so I'm not going to go into detail on each and every rule. This is literally like a, like multi 73 pages of information. If you're really interested, you can just you know what, website. Luke, before we even get into these 73 pages, oh. I think it's really time for us to take another break for this week's Luke's rant. I can't believe we're here already. So Thank my you. rant, I'm going to keep this related to colleges. And so my daughter. Don't and you complain about Michigan again. I'm not going to complain about how expensive out-of-state schools are, but I am going to complain about their marketing departments. Okay. Like, oh my goodness gracious. So apparently when you take the PSATs, the pre one, that's what the P yeah. stands for apparently. And I guess if you do well, like these colleges start like hedging their bets and they like start reaching out to you. And uh, clearly they, I mean, we're getting probably at least one or two a day, like a mailer or she's getting emails. Oh, I mean, yeah. They're sending, I mean, it is overwhelming. And I don't know who issues the test, the PSAT test, but I wish my daughter would have checked the box. Like, do not like share my personal information because it is like out of hand. And the, the material that they're sending these kids is, it's so generic. It's so like, I mean, they have no idea who they're marketing towards. They don't know their audience. Like they have no idea if she's going for like engineering or pre-med or pharmacy or, you know, education. It's just, I, it seems like a terrible waste of paper and effort and resources to do this. Yeah. Like, I think once you find out what the kids are interested in, then maybe it makes sense. Cause like there's schools that she, like don't even have her major that are sending her information that she's interested in. And it just, it just seems like they're really bad at marketing. It's just maybe their them, flyer is really good and it will convince her. It's not like, actually it's not. basket weaving is what I wanted. No, because she's not allowed. I basically <laughs> she's not allowed to get anything other than a B, no BAs. I told her BS only. You, you're not allowed to get a BA in anything. I won't voice my opinions on those things. I get in trouble when I do. Yeah. Um, I'm I think that's good, Luke. Um, Come on, colleges, save a yeah. tree. Yeah, stop, save, stop save a tree. All these things. Be a little more specific. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So hall right. design. Hall design. So so basically, they, they got to make this thing. They do. I love. There is one single dimensional constraint. Isn't which that is nuts? Mind blowing. To yeah. Me. It basically can't be any more than twenty two feet. That was That's crazy it. to that see. That is the only. It can be as deep as you want it to be. It could also twenty two feet feels massive. But it what do is. I know? I mean, I don't know that much about canoes, but my goodness. Uh, I think like a full size canoe is around 20, 22 feet. Like it's the smaller canoe. Yeah, but hold on. So um, it says all, and it says other dimensions. It says there's no regulations on their values and it's the sole discretion of the team. So you could, like, you could make this thing like a pontoon, like it could sure. be really big and flat or oh, narrow. Oh, really? Uh, there's, only, there's only one dimensional constraint, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so, I guess so. Uh, I don't couple think thing about is going to work about the materials. So wow. this thing needs to be smooth and streamlined. Smooth. It says the final prototype shall be constructed with components that are categorized under and comply with concrete only reinforcement and flotation. And it all needs to be encased in the concrete. So it, it can't does. be like you make this out of concrete and then you like screw a couple of like foamy you know pool noodles on the side to make it you float get better. like a a piece of sidewalk and just set it on some pool noodles uh, yes, like yes, that yes, idea so, yeah so that doesn't work so essentially it needs to be all completely completely in, in, encased in the concrete so it sounds like what what they usually are doing is they're taking things like foam which obviously floats and when they're building these cross sections or they're doing the molds they're actually inserting foam as a part of the construction and in some cases they're probably doing some kind of air crete where they're infusing air or bubbles into the concrete to make it more porous and more floaty but that also makes it not as strong and they might be adding in like fiber materials to reinforce so there's all kinds of things that they can do but there isn't a ton of guidance with like what they have to do. Like it's like the type of concrete as long as they document it, 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 it it's pretty wide open from what I could tell. Yeah. Uh, can I walk through real quick, like 
how an expert would make this thing. Oh, I'm well, I'm sure you I'm sure you did this in your research. I, in my backyard, since I don't have anything else to do all day, I've just been crafting concrete canoes. So it's fantastic. So this oh, is James. thanks to um Kelly Doyle, who's on the YouTubes, and apparently Kelly has done this before, it sounds like. Okay. Um so design buoyant concrete. This means you need so you make your own concrete. Like, it's not like you just get it. You're not going to Home Depot. Right. I kind of thought you did, but it turns out you don't. Um, so this means you have to make it under 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. So that's the, the max number you're going for. Fun fact, this is basically your civil engineering degree in a nutshell, Luke. Making concrete. So concrete's made up of three things. Water and cement and an aggregate. And aggregates usually mean like sand or gravel or something like that. Sand and gravel, turns out they're really heavy. And they so sink. They, <laughs> they sink, yes. Usually. So you do you have a civil degree? Because it mm. sounds like you know what you're talking Close. about. Okay. Um, and so from there, instead of using sand or gravel because they're heavy, they use uh, little glass spheres instead as their aggregate, which reduces the weight of their concrete. So now Kelly says the best, me best method is trial and error. That makes me a little questionable, but okay. Mm -hmm. And she says maybe up to a thousand batches to test everything or whatever you have time for. Okay. Um, so next you design your hall. So apparently it's made out of all those bits that you already talked about. So I'll mm -hmm. skip over that. Fun fact, a shorter canoe is going to go slower at its top speed. But since we have to consider the different events like the slalom and like, you know, weaving and in and out of things yeah. and the sprints, you know, you have to factor all of that into your design. You also have to fit your people in so that the water line doesn't go above your canoe. So maybe go with smaller people, maybe like James sized folks so that you don't have to worry about it or do a better job designing your stuff. I don't know if you'd have the strength. Yeah, well, that's fair. I definitely wouldn't. I'd be more of like the manager, I think. Um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, next build your mold. Okay. So this is, it can either be a female mold or a male mold. So I don't understand why they would go with those names, but you go ahead and figure that one out for the female mold. You get a block and you cut the canoe shape into it. And then you fill that shape with concrete with the male mold. You build the inside of the canoe and put concrete on the outside of these molds. And these molds are usually like wood or styrofoam, something like that. But you have to be careful with styrofoam because it's weak and crappy, right? Um, tip, you'll want to use, um, you'll want to model like a key in there. So like a piece of the concrete you can take out so that you can easily get the other sections out of your mold without them cracking. Um, and now you build your canoe. You apply reinforcements, which can either be done before or after casting the concrete. Um, the example that Kelly here showed me was that um, she uses like they used like screws that they put into the concrete. And then they used pre-stressing tendon systems, which is like these cables that they would tie to the screws um, like to pre-stress. Like hold it together? Like to... Yeah, to like compress it. Interesting. To apply stress to it. They'd then apply a carbon fiber mesh to the cables and the screws. Then they'd slap more concrete over top of that and call it a day. Because it all needs to be encased. Because it all needs to be encased, right? Some of the lazy teams out there just put that layer of concrete, then the reinforcing fiber mesh stuff, and then more concrete on top of that. And then, like you mentioned, you can add styrofoam and stuff like that. So like in the bulkheads, you can put styrofoam in there so long as they're encased to help with that buoyancy. Um, next, you have to cure your canoe. And they say the first seven days is the most critical part of the curing process where you really need to make sure that you have the right hydration levels going on with the cement so it doesn't you know, crack and fail and then you sink and die. Um, and then uh, it can take up to 28 days for it to fully cure. So you need to really plan ahead. This is going to be a whole month before you can even try and take this thing out and hope that it doesn't break when you're removing and it. And if you don't do it right, you got to start all over again. Yeah, what a bummer. Um, and that's it, Luke. That's the whole process. All righty. So you, you build this canoe that James just described. The next thing you have to do is at the beginning of the competition, you got to do a float test because like oh, yeah. James said, we don't want these individuals going into Lake Michigan or wherever they happen to be yeah. and, you know, sinking and dying at um, least they're not mechanical engineers 
you do have to wear a you do have to wear a life vest. That's true. Um, <laughs> so basically, the float test means it just has to like when it tips over or when it fills with water, it has to float near the surface within two minutes. So, so they fill it up, and then it has to come That's back crazy. up near the surface within uh, two minutes. If it doesn't, then you get some points deducted, but you're still allowed to continue to compete. You can add flotation material that right. will help with the float test. So, like, and I, I think get that's the a maths, safety thing. But that just still doesn't make sense in my brain, right? It's like, nope, concrete, you sink. But, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, a couple other things that they need to do is, uh, do you want to talk about the race itself? Yeah, heck yeah, we do. Okay. I don't want to talk about the presentation. That's boring. Yeah, so, uh, so basically, um, the race consists of, is it, there's a total of five types of races. Mm -hmm. um, they're only held weather permitting. And I guess if they don't happen, then they just scratch that judging and you get judged on the other stuff. <laughs> I would be so disappointed. So they have a two woman slalom, a two men slalom, a two women sprint, a two men sprint, and a co-ed sprint with two men and two women. Um, and depending on the race, so the slaloms for the men and women are 200 meters. Um, it does get extended to 400 whenever it's a society wide competition. I'm not sure what that means. I don't know why it's different, but it is. I, I don't know why it's different either, but essentially if you don't know what a slalom is, first of all, stop listening, but basically <laughs> It's it, they're basically navigating a bunch of buoys, I think is the word. Those things that float in the water yep. uh, over the um, uh, the 200 meters. Uh, and then they do a sprint portion, which is a straight line paddle as fast as you can. That's where the strength comes in that James might not have that I probably would have just saying. You are very if strong. If anybody's looking for uh, someone on their team. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and basically they're timed. You know, and uh, that's it, it's it's a purely timed race, and uh, whoever comes in first gets the most points. That's that pretty straightforward. Well done. Yeah, it is. It is pretty simple what they're doing. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to do it, but it is very straightforward. Um, yeah. What else do you got? So let's talk. We do have to talk about a little bit of the boring stuff. So if you're oh, doing this, so they do ahead. have to they do have to do a technical presentation, and they do have to have a display that they do. So they have to have a full size display that shows the cross section. Uh, the display is at that this was conference. Kind of interesting. I thought it was. Um, it can't be a walk around display. It has to be seen only from the front. Uh, they're not allowed to have anything kind of connected to it. There's no like video screens and like extra stuff. It's it's literally like going to the most boring trade show you've ever gone to. Like, and I've been to some boring yeah, ones. A cross section of a canoe, and that's it. Um, and they get judged a, a, as a part of that display. The other thing they get judged on is the technical presentation. So it is a five minute long presentation followed by seven minutes of questions by the panel. Uh, the presentation they say should focus on the design, construction, and technical capabilities. You got to speak English to do this. So if you don't speak English or your team is non-English speaking, you better learn the English um, pretty quickly because it has to be spoken in English. Um, you are only allowed to have uh, like standard AV equipment, laptop, projector, monitor sort of thing. You have to have at least two people present. So if if you're a whole bunch of typical civils and you're not really good at like communicating or, you know, <laughs> mechanicals too and like there's always that one person in the group who's really engineers outgoing. in general um, yeah you, you have to have at least two of those people on the team um probably the person not in the boat you're gonna be like here you're good at the talkins you go yeah. do that part you're not good at making yeah. things um and they basically get judged on their presentation and I, I and what i'm a little offended by james i think you probably saw this i think we agreed on this like that's what you get that's the most important thing is I'm sorry, the, the most important thing is the proposal, the written proposal that you have to make, which I read some of these way over my head, first of all. I don't remember any of, this, any of the numbers or you know, uh, equations they were writing, but it, that's 30 points, just the proposal. The presentation is 25. The prototype that you build, so your display that, that, that you build and the, the, the finished product is 25. The race is only 25, there's only 20 points. How jive is that? It's very jive, very jive I, is the I, word. I don't like it. Yeah, I think it should be all about your boat and yeah. the presentation should be like 
two points. I'm not a sales guy. I made the boat. I hired you could some, technically sell this completely garbage. lose. Like you, you could not even participate in the race, and like your, your boat sinks. sink, and yeah. you could and win this competition. Well. It really makes me mad. It does. Makes me want to go smash some holes in someone's concrete canoe. No, uh, too far. So, James, you might wonder what could get you disqualified from one of these races. I do wonder that, Luke. So smashing all, holes in people's concrete canoes. So I think that would fall under any sportsmanship and interference. <laughs> uh, any sports, any poor sportsmanship or interference uh, could be a call for disqualification. Obviously, not following safety rules. So make sure you wear your life vests. Uh, you do have to meet all kinds of milestones throughout the year. Um, there, you do have to participate in the spirit of competition, whatever that means. That seems super subjective because like, yeah. I'd be like calling everybody losers and like, I'd have like, like, I'd be super aggressive about it on my team. I'm with you. Yeah. Saying. Uh, or if your students are like the dumbs, like you, you can't have students that like are like failing and like they have to meet certain oh, academic their grades. And eligibility requirements to so be we're the out team. already. That's unfortunate. We are out. That's all I got. Uh, a little bit on who your competition is, Luke. Looking at the Ooh, 2022 results, I, I won't that. go. I won't go through all of the options here. I will call out Lipscomb University for the Spirit of the Competition Award. Good job, Lipscomb. But overall winners: number one, Cal Poly State University, San Luis Ob. Obispo, somebody wrote in and told us to do an episode on them, actually. So apparently okay. they're good at making canoes. Université <laughs> Laval. So I'm guessing that's like Canada or someone, not, not America. Western Kentucky University came in third. Number four, Luke, mind-blowing, Youngstown State University. I saw that. What is that all about? Last I checked, they weren't even an accredited engineer. They're the school, burb of the so burb. That's, yeah, that's impressive. And then last but not least in fifth place, New York University Tandem. Tandon. Tandon. So good job, all of you teams. Youngstown State, hit us up. Like, we're next door. This is great. We'll sponsor you with well wishes. <laughs> so the one that I thought was funny was that spirit of the competition. Like... They clearly weren't good because they're they're not even in the top. <laughs> they're not in the top five. They weren't in the top five for overall. Not in the top five for technical. Not in the top five for oral presentation. Like they weren't like there was like it's 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 basically the the participation Particip ribbon. Do you ever watch like those cooking shows and they're like, gosh, this is really ugly. <laughs> and of course, the judges are always like, boy, but it really tasted good. Like <laughs> that's exactly like, yeah. what it's like. That's what happened. Oh, um, I did see. I was really excited. I thought Pitt Johnstown. One one time, no, they hosted the event. Oh, one year. so come on, Pitt Johnstown, up your game. Yeah, because I mean, you can't canoe up there; it's all flooded from the Johnstown flood, right? right? It's just a big lake, I guess. So you I'm could pretty canoe. sure. Yeah, it should be. Did we ever um, do a podcast on a Johnstown flood? I feel like we did. We if we did, I don't think we, we did. We should. I okay. I agree. Um, that's all I had as well, Luke. This was um, good. I feel like I, making a canoe now. I think we could do it other than our grade, grades not being up to par, so we couldn't compete. And the spirit of the competition might be against us. A little too aggressive. Yeah, yeah. I feel like they did this canoe contest in Wednesday. Did you watch that on Netflix? The no. Adams Family Wednesday? Anyways, they anywho. Um, if any of you watched Wednesday and want to talk about it with me, <laughs> if you want to tell us what we got wrong about our concrete canoes, if you want to tell us what words we said wrong because you love doing that, anything like that, go ahead and email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. And until next time. See ya.